Hello and welcome to My Retro Watches. My name is Mike. If you're new to the channel, thank you very much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So what is this video all about? I have here another Seiko. It's a Seiko 6119. Uh, it's from 1973. It's about as retro as they come, uh, which suits me down to the ground. The uh, problem is it doesn't run. It tries to run when you give it a, a Seiko shuffle, so to, so to speak. Uh, it'll run for maybe two or three seconds and then stop. It's pretty obvious it needs a service. Um, but for those of you out there who maybe don't know what's involved in a watch service or what possibly could stop the watch, we're going to just take it apart. I've never been in this one before, so it's a, a journey into the unknown for me as well. Um, and let's just find out exactly what's preventing this from running. So it's over to the bench. Right here we are on the bench and you can see the retro watch in all its full glory. Um, they really did know how to do things back in the 70s, didn't they? I don't think you could get away with anything like this in today's world. Um, it is in pretty good condition overall. And there we go, the three it begins with there. Uh, that signifies really that it's a 1973. And once again, uh, the second hand at the moment is just up here on near the 12. And if I just give that a little shake, it's moved about a second, maybe another second. And if it was a, a nice, clean, well-serviced movement, just a little shake like that would give you a couple of minutes of power. So clearly um, there is something not quite right in here. I'm just suspecting it's old dirt and grime, uh, but let's go in and find out. So the first thing to do is to remove the bracelet and get into the case. So I'll remove that off camera and then I'll show you how you get into this type of case because it's a little bit different to some of the others. So now we've got the bracelets off. Uh, this is an interesting case. I've seen or I've videoed one of these before. Um, you have to push the levers or the little spring that's inside the here. And there's two more under there, but you can't get to those. And sort of push on the crystal a little bit to make it uh, pop out. There we go, this one was quite easy, sometimes they're quite difficult. And that lifts off and reveals the sort of closed case. So here we go, crystal is acrylic and it's stuck on the top with a little gasket. And we have to just basically pull that off and it will have been on for quite a long time. So there we go. And as I've said in some of my other videos, always just be careful about trying to remove these old um, gaskets because they can stretch quite easily and they're quite difficult, certainly on a, on a shaped case, really difficult to find. So I'm not trying to pull it, I'm just trying to separate the two. And it's just stuck there a little bit, there we go. So the gasket is now off. And to get into these movements, the um, stem release is in here, in this little hole. And I'll see if I can do this on camera. It's not always that easy. Um, you want to poke in there either something very small like a pair of tweezers or a small screwdriver or even the end of a spring bar tool. Just enough to push the latch down. of which it's sometimes quite difficult. There we go. I've had these before where the lever's actually missing or it's fell off and that makes a whole new world of problems. Uh, just a simple ventil actually while I'm here uh, because the 6119 Seiko movement uh, or the 619C uh, in particular, the day and the date are operated by pushing the crown in so you push it in once and it'll change the uh, the date and push it in harder and it'll change the day and often this stops working and other than it could be something mechanical quite often if you I'm not sure if this is going to pick up in here but underneath the crown is usually quite a lot of dirt again you know if it hasn't been looked after very well 
or it's been worn a lot and it's, seven, it's uh, from the 70s so it's 40 odd years old that can be full of DNA and it's actually just hampering the um, the mechanics so you could quite simply remove the crown uh, clean in there put it back in also sort of clean around the tube here and you might find that that might actually fix your problem so there's just a little tip while we're here um, now all we need to do is take the movement out of the case okay to pop the movement out it should just literally drop out and there it is I'll just move that to one side for a moment and then we can look inside my lights a bit dazzling here so what we're looking for here is some service marks and I can tell you that I can see two and I'm not too sure whether you guys could see that let me try and get it in you've got there'll be some etching here and there um, I can't make that out with my eyes without my glasses certainly but at some point in time this at least has had two services and for a Seiko of this age it should have had quite a few more um, but this is still promising because the amount I do of these uh, I often take them out of the case and I don't even see a single uh, service mark anywhere to be seen so uh, at some point in time somebody's loved this uh, watch a little bit and given it the care it deserves. Okay just need to remove the hands now like so and then we'll remove the dial and to remove the dial on one of these it'll be some dial feet and so just a couple of simple screws and we're just going to loosen those off and another one around here and now the dial will come off nice easy and safely and I'll just put that somewhere in my tray. Right, okay, so I'm just going to move all the um, calendar works aside first of all, and we'll see if we can see anything in there that is awry. I would assume possibly not. Sometimes just removing the calendar works um, makes the watch start to run again, usually when you get to the, to the Canon pinion. However, let's see. I've got the microscope set up and ready so we can examine things uh, as and when we uh, need to. Uh, we just need to remove this C-ring, which is at the top. And to do that, I just want to use a small screwdriver and just pry it a little bit. And it's jumped a little bit, but that's fine. I know exactly where it is. Sometimes good to have a bit of Rodico at hand to uh, rescue that, should it... Uh, want to move and then the dial disc will lift off nice and safely and then you're looking at the uh, inner workings here of the calendar movement and first of all we need to remove the uh, the guard here so we can remove the ring and the guard looks like it's got four screws sorry five screws uh, but this particular screw is um, on the other side of the plate uh, these are really small screws And like I've said lots of times before, one screw at a time for me. Especially these ones. These are the smallest ones I find in these um, 6119s. So they're bigger under magnification, but to the naked eye, these things are, I don't know, trying to guess, less than two millimeters in diameter for sure. also pays to have uh, some good tweezers um, certainly if you're starting to go down the rabbit hole a bit more uh, I would recommend I can't show you here this brand uh, Dumont uh, these are Swiss uh, these are the high-tech brand which are well the, the less expensive you can pay 40 50 pounds for a pair of uh, decent uh, Dumont tweezers and these uh, cousins at the moment are only around um, 
12, 13 pounds, I think. It's a really good value. Um, anyway, I'm digressing. So now we've re removed the guard, that should just lift up a little bit with the day ring, uh, the date wheel, sorry. They do separate those two. Um, this isn't intentionally going to be a disassembly video. It's really just trying to spot anything obvious. So again, if we come up here, uh, looking at it, it's very, very clean, very nice uh, on this side. So nothing obvious at all. So we'll continue the uh, strip down and see what else we can find. Um, we need to just move the, I need a bit of pegwood. Need to take the tension off of this, like so. That's the uh, date wheel spring. It's actually quite stuck on that post. It normally comes off with a bit of rodico. There we go. And I can now, I say I can lift the hour wheel off. Of course I can't because I've got to remove all the uh, the day wheel fingers there. So we have a little guard here and we've also got the keyless works. So perhaps we'll do the keyless works first actually. Uh, pretty straightforward, two strews. Okay. And what am I talking about? Then I've got to remove the yoke. And the yoke's been a bit stubborn too. There we are. And once the yoke is out, we can get the uh, setting wheel, setting lever. Let's just get the clutch out, sorry. And this is sitting on a little post. Again, tends to need a little leverage. Like so. And then it's got the, this is the uh, the lever that you're pressing actually, um, when you're sort of pushing, when the dial's on to release the uh, stem and crown, you're pushing on this little bit here. And that just rests in, believe it or not. It's held in um, by all the rest of the uh, the screws here for the setting lever. Okay, right. Um, let's continue to disassemble. I really don't think we're going to find any problems on the calendar works, but we'll keep going and see what happens. So I'll just take the... Uh, The driving wheel for the day and the date um, changes. I've completely lost all of my terminology. <laughs> However, there we go. I'm never a fan of these nylon ones. Uh, it's funny because some 6119s have these nylon um, parts or plastic parts, like the inter intermediate wheel here, and then some of them um, have all steel. So. It seems to be pretty random. I guess it's depending on what they'd got lying around at the time. And now the hour wheel can come straight off. We'll just remove this little guard here, which protects the minute wheel. It's quite funny on these because the this screw looks smaller, yet it has a bigger thread. I don't think you're going to be able to see that on, on camera. Whereas this screw, the head looks bigger. Yet the thread is a lot smaller. It's a, it's a bit of a conundrum why they do it like that. Um, but they do. And it can come... It can catch you out when you're trying to rebuild these things sometimes because you think you've got the right screw and of course you haven't. Okay. 
Okay, so that's that out, and then we just take that little wheel out there. Okay, so, so far, still nothing obvious. All looks nice and clean, to be honest with you. Um, surprising. I'm going to remove the cannon pinion. Again, I can't see anything obvious. I'll put this now on the scope and we'll have a look at the uh, top of the main plate here. See if again we can spot any dirt or anything obvious. Okay, so here we are on the microscope and we're looking at basically the um, fourth wheel uh, staff there, a pivot, along with the center wheel. I'm just trying to get into focus for you a little bit. And all I can notice is the obvious uh, bit of dried oil let's just see if I can get an oiler and point that out so again without a microscope um, you might not notice this um, so they're a really good tool for inspecting so you can see here this is should be fluid and it's quite um, I don't know what the right word would be gelatinous you know, it shouldn't be like that at all so that's certainly going to be hindering here uh, let's have another look around, see what else we've got. So this is just the other uh, driving wheels. The jewels are going to be pretty difficult to tell, although I can look at that. That should be a nice sort of pink colour, and you can see these. Just trying to get my oiler in the way. I don't know whether I can zoom in any more of that for you. So it looks like there's dried oil underneath there. Again, that's going to be hampering it and slowing it down. The little dia fix. Doesn't look too bad, but it would be a similar issue there, I would imagine. And then that jewel also. That looks quite... Um, yeah, let's see, look at that. I can pick it out with the oiler. So that's just gone... It's gone dry. It hasn't turned into the powder yet. I've seen it sometimes where it's... It's gone past this stage and turned into powder and at that point it just acts as an abrasive and that's a disaster because that will then wear out all your parts and you often see that let's see if i can get that on the camera zoom out a bit it's a bit too far um what i'm looking for i've got to get my bearings is the um there so this is the bottom of the barrel which houses the mainspring so there's usually a lot of it's a different grease you'd use here and um, that's probably rock hard that's not too bad look well it is it's bad enough um, but what will happen there if that, that if that dries out and turns into powder it grinds the actual main plate away so it makes the hole uh, bigger and then the mainspring is a lot sloppier in that hole which doesn't uh, bode well at that point at all um, so they are the main parts I guess in the keyless works here's the keyless this is where it would be don't be too bad there's, yeah there's some again grease there but you'd expect that um, there's a bit of something there on the I don't know whether that's on the teeth there or it's just so so far what's stopping the watch well all of this basically and I guess we might have a continuation of this on the other side or maybe something a little bit worse. Uh, so we'll go back onto the bench now and we'll have a look. Okay, here we are then. Uh, back on the bench to have a look at the motion side of things. Uh, every now and again, I just keep seeing the balance move a quarter of a turn, like it's trying. I haven't really put any more power into the mainspring particularly. Um, and I'm not going to. I'm just going to take it apart now, and let's just see what else we can we can uncover. It could be just that it's just that bit of grime. Let's find out. So first thing to remove is I'll take off the automatic framework on the top here, and that's just held in by three screws. Okay. 
that and the mainspring just moved then and again so it's you never know me just moving that bit of uh, gelatinous oil <laughs> might have given it a little bit of life you never know stranger things have happened okay to get the automatic framework off i shouldn't really be using my fingers it's not good practice um, these are normally just have sometimes a bit of spring to them because the pull lever is engaged and that's the last thing you want to break uh, funny enough the very first movement i ever serviced look at it it's trying to go now look um was one of these and i broke the pull lever uh, at this very point um which was a disaster it took me a while to get a, a, a replacement and it was probably not dissimilar to that it sprung off um probably because i'm talking more than knowing what i'm doing and it actually broke one in there however so strangely moving that is giving it obviously really bad um amplitude if you want to call it that i wouldn't even call it amplitude it just doesn't really want to run very well at all there does it so at least it's trying so we're now going to have to take the power out and remove the um train wheel bridge there and we'll see well actually i'll tell you what no i'll put it back on the microscope and we'll just look at the top of here before i take it off all right okay we're looking at the uh the jewel there on the top of the balance and it doesn't have the same sort of oil ring that the one on the other side does if we try and look at the coil just from this side i know we can't see too much we can see the the terminal curve there but from the coils that i can see they look pretty centric so i would hard to believe it was going to be anything to do with the uh, main spring uh, sorry the hairspring I'm not really going to get the pallet from from this angle although i can just see the top of the jewel there and it could be the light let's see if i can point that out to you guys so you can see the purple jewel here it could be the trick of the light but it's a bit white on the top there so i don't know what that is maybe the jewel is um fractured broken uh, or it's a bit of dirt or like i say it's just the light i can't tell uh, so let's just move on to some more diafix i think i can see a bit of gunk under there And again, that doesn't look too great, does it? But not too bad, in fairness. I've seen these a lot worse. I've actually found a watch recently. I think I filmed it, I'm not sure. Um, that one of these was absolutely cacked in crap. And that's what it was stopped. That's what stopped the, the movement entirely. Um, but certainly taking off the uh, automatic framework has given it a bit of a bit of a lease of life it's probably the first time it's ran for quite some time so let's take off the uh, train wheel bridge and examine inside so i just need to let down the uh, what tension there is on this mainspring i'm guessing probably not a lot and to do that i'm just going to put the screw on the top there i'm going to turn it once which makes the click come out i'm sorry but the camera doesn't want to focus on it there so the click is here and i'm just going to grab the click and then i can take the tension off with my screwdriver uh, as you heard there there was actually quite a bit of tension so it was under a lot of, well reasonable power and that should have been running a lot faster than it was okay now we've taken the tension off we can re remove the ratchet wheel on the top here sorry the movement's just come and done i noticed that Okay, so now I would expect to find a bit of dirt underneath here. It's usually a big oiling point, and again, that oil likes to get dirty. Although, said that said, surprising. Doesn't look too bad. Okay, so. Train wheel bridge, uh, to remove that, we just need to remove these uh, three screws. We 
you're always wanting to find a, a way in sometimes with these. Over the train wheel bridge off. Just check the underside of that. And perhaps we'll examine that on the on the scope as well. Okay, now we're looking at the uh, train wheel bridge uh, from the underside, and quite clearly you can see that sort of yellowy, orangey mark uh, on this jewel over here. And of course, that again is dried oil which will be playing into the hands of the movement and making it uh, perform pretty badly. That one's okay. And then this one is the uh, Diafix. And I'm thinking that doesn't look too great either. Let's just see if we can get a bit closer. I can't quite tell if that is um, cracked or just oiled, uh, uh, you know, gumped up. Uh, looking with my eye now, rather than looking through the screen, uh, through the scope, yeah, it's just a bit of, well, there's a lot of gunk actually in there, so um, I'm fortunate that the jewel hasn't broken. Just trying to see if I can get that focused. My eyes are terrible without my glasses, I'm afraid, so sorry about that, guys. Um, you might be wondering how I do this on the microscope. The microscope I'm using, by the way, is an AM scope. It's a 306 series i believe uh, it's pretty good it's uh it's got an led light on it um times 20 times 40 and for me to uh film uh, because it's a stereoscope it's got two eyepieces i use one eyepiece uh, with my phone actually with just a little bracket to hold it in place and and then i can use some of my uh, phone's uh, zoom capabilities as well in order to get as you know a digital zoom like this which I should have done to start with, shouldn't I? <laughs> uh, but there you go, you can kind of see that's a big blob in there. And that won't be doing it any good at all. Um, so the importance, if you're uh, you know, getting more and more into uh, watch repair and, and, and fixing your own watches, buying a, a microscope is a big game changer because uh, I didn't have one for probably about a year and I cleaned everything in an ultrasonic and I used the right fluids and I was using my visor and I was using loops and I was thinking things are clean um, but then once you got the scope and you went back to the watches that didn't quite service as well as you'd hoped and you started looking at them under the microscope you found that you'd missed no end of dirt um, in part it was your cleaning process uh, it wasn't good enough you should have done some pre-cleaning I guess with some pegwood and things like that um, but it was the importance you know you, you could it really did open my eyes quite literally, uh, under a scope to the finer points, you know, little tiny bits of dirt matter a lot uh, for the performance. And if you're chasing amplitude, um, which I certainly do, uh, it's a, amplitude is a big bugbear of mine, I like to get it as good as I can. And it's these tiny little things in various uh, areas of the watch, uh, which will really give you a big difference. So if you are a little bit into the journey of, um, watch tinkering definitely uh, buy yourself a scope if you want to see this scope i've got it on my tool page on my website there's a link there and you can see this scope and others within the range uh, which you can buy they're, they're just clicks to amazon uh, so you're not buying it from me but i do get a kickback from amazon if you did want to buy there so now we're just going to go back onto the bench we'll take off the um, take out the gears out the train and um, actually no i'll tell you what because I'm doing this on the fly, I'll remove that. We'll just quickly put the train onto the microscope. Before we move, remove anything else, I'll just zoom out a little bit so we get a bit of a perspective. And we're just looking again, really, for anything obvious. Any hairs that might be tangled in there. Sometimes if I actually found recently... Uh, and it was one of the members, one of the admins actually, um, uh, Rob, no it's not Rob, <laughs> I forgot his name, <laughs> uh, he's, a, he's a good friend as well, but uh, his his watch, I took it apart and it had some, um, some uh, swarf, some metal filings in there, uh, I'm not quite sure how they got in there, but that stopped it. 
And it's, it's Rob Symes, by the way. So Rob Symes, if you were watching, <laughs> sorry, I forgot your name. I can't believe that. Anyway, there we go. So uh, on top of the barrel there, that's not actually too bad. I've seen a lot worse. Uh, we will crack open the barrel in a minute and see what's inside. But we'll just remove all these parts just to see what the bottom of the main plate looks like and continue from there. I'm just going to remove the... Uh, I can't remove the click on these. I have to unscrew them, don't I? That's... Uh, it certainly would help. I've been doing so many 7 Series Seikos, I, I forget sometimes that uh, the difference is between the 6s and the 7s. So with the click out of the way, we can remove the fourth wheel and the third wheel. And at Atlanta they look okay. And then we can remove the barrel. And that doesn't look too bad. Usually these again are full of gunk, so the professional service serviced it last time, obviously used some good oils and didn't go too crazy with the oil. Uh, so now really I do need to remove the balance. I, I should have removed that out at the start, but I wanted to see if the the watch was gonna try and run a little bit, which it did. I'll just flip that over and I don't again I'm not too sure well, actually we can put that on the scope canvas have a quick look at the uh, balance close-up and we just want to look at the, uh, the pivot there at the bottom that looks pretty good the jewel looks good and of course the hairspring itself couldn't be any better really those are nice and concentric there's no kinks no bumps nothing so it's safe to say really that the uh, hairspring and the balance are absolutely fine. Right, now we're just going to remove the uh, centre wheel bridge. It has a flat headed screwdriver, a uh, screwdriver? It has a flat headed screw on it. Um, not to be mixed up, it can be easily mixed up with some of the um, train wheel bridge screws which are slightly domed and it could impede on the running of the watch. Uh, with that off, we'll just remove the balance, uh, sorry, the pallet cock. Which rather worryingly there, the uh, screws are very, very loose. They are less than finger tight. So that in itself, um, is a bit of a concern. Why they'd be like that, uh, I don't know. And I've seen this before, the trying to separate these two. I'm going to take that to, to one side and do that uh, off camera. This is uh, quite often happens. Uh, it's been in there for a while, so it gets stuck. Uh, could be could be some gunk. Maybe God forbid somebody may have even oiled it. We've uh, got to be very careful because the pivot on that is absolutely tiny. Uh, so then we're just going to take the escape out and the centre wheel, and then we'll just look at this main plate uh, under the scope and just see again what we can find there. Right, we're now looking at the. Um, the centre wheel jewel from the motion side and if you remember on the other side when we're on the microscope we could see lots of old oil and again we can see exactly the same on this side and I would say without a question of a doubt let me look at it all there look so without a question of a doubt this and some of the other dried oil is exactly why this was not performing I didn't really suspect anything else uh, other than maybe a stray hair or, or something. That is where the um, balance um, staff goes into the um, die shot jewel. It's got a bit of a scratch on there, which is a bit worrying, but uh, 
in the main it looks okay. Again, this jewel here, which is the, um, just trying to think now, this is the escape jewel. A bit dirty again. That one is absolutely horrendous. Is it on this side or is it actually on the other side? Let's have a look. It's on this side. So look at that. Absolutely uh, cacked in oil. Although it would have been oiled with the right amount, no doubt, but that's just what happens. It just gets old, it solidifies, and like I say, eventually will dry out and turn into grinding powder. Uh, last of all, this is where the, um, the barrel would go. And I would, without a shadow of a doubt, think the same. Although, no, I'm deceptive. That's it. Oh, it is. I can't quite tell. For once, I'm actually looking at this through the uh, phone rather than the lens. And sometimes this is actually tarnished, where it's actually gone down to the base metal, um, which could be the case, but there's certainly still some dirt there, too. So the last thing to look at, and then I'll uh, end the video, is the... Um, mainspring so I've opened the barrel already and I've got it just here so I'll just try and bring that up oh, I'm going the wrong way bring that into focus and try and zoom out a little bit so you guys can see it a bit better Get a pair of tweezers or something so um, again yes look this is really gonna impede the performance of the spring itself because it's going to be sticking when it shouldn't be sticking um, so again what you're looking at is old grease that's got in into that in between stage of um, solidifying and actually doing what it's supposed to do uh, so that's now sticking the mainspring together um, and not very well at all so we'll clean all that off and um, Put it all back in. So this was a bit of an off-cuff cuff video. It wasn't one I was going to be planning. I just suddenly thought, hey, I've got to watch it stopped. And um, perhaps it could be something interesting inside. Who knows? So uh, I took you on the journey. Uh, some of you are going to be far more experienced than I am. I've seen all this before. But I'm hoping really to um, reach out to the people who are just starting. And so they know a bit, about, bit more about what to look out for. And that it's the finer details that really do matter when it comes to the cleaning part, yet alone the servicing part. So the, the part of rebuilding and oiling is, is all very well, but the cleaning is so, so important. So I, I have to really emphasize that. You know, my whole channel really is, is just just trying to get more and more of you incentivized into thinking that, you know, watchmaking as a hobby is, is good fun. Um, it's, it's interesting to take something that doesn't work apart uh, with a bit of tuition, i.e. my videos or uh, Mark Lovett's videos, for instance, his videos are absolutely excellent. Um, you know, you can be inspired by these sort of things. Uh, you can be shown how to do uh, the, the, what's good practice and have a go yourself. And the rewards are absolutely phenomenal to, to take a watch. It doesn't run for the first time, take it apart, get it back together again. And it does run irrespective of cleaning or getting into amplitude or how well it's timed just the fact that it runs and it's done that you've done that by your own hand that's what really gave me the bug uh, when i did my first one it took me about three days asking lots of questions on a web forum and you know when it ran um, i felt like a million dollars um, but for me the problem was it became really really addictive and uh, i love the challenge uh, you know my actual watch collection is a is a byproduct of my hobby. My hobby is fixing the watches more than actually wearing them and enjoying them, I think, to be honest with you. So anyway, I'm going to end the video there because I could talk for ages and maybe me talking in front of the camera is worth another video in itself. Uh, so hopefully it didn't bore you and you've got something out of this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. I will reply to it. Uh, if you want to see more, of course, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the bell button because that way you'll be notified when I upload some new content. Thanks very much, guys. See you in the next one.